Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Manitoba Sports Network. This afternoon, we have Brandon Wheat Kings and Kenora Thistles. This is your pregame show brought to you by Brandon Chrysler. My name is Jared Thiessen and joining me is Travis Longman. So welcome to the broadcast, Travis. Oh, thanks, Jared. It's good to be uh, on, here, on air here. And it should be a good contest this afternoon between Brandon and Kenora. Absolutely, it should be. Brandon Wheat Kings sitting first in the league in points and the standings, Kenora not quite so high. Uh, fourth from the bottom. Yeah, but not the start that the Thistles wanted to the year, but they've got some good young guys on their team and certainly shouldn't look out of place here tonight against the Wheat Kings. And, of course, in the AAA Midget League, there's always the opportunity for a team to come out, out of a game that nobody expected them to win, and they, they do. Oh, that's for sure. Any team can be beaten on. It's, well, that's the beauty about sports. Any team can beat anyone on any given day. Absol yeah. Absolutely. And the Wheat Kings, of course, led by the offensive player power of Nolan Ritchie. Nolan Ritchie has been an absolute uh, spark plug for this team. Uh, third in the league in points. Yeah, tw 25. 25 points in 11 games, including 19 assists. That's pretty pretty incredible start for number 11 for the Wheat Kings. And so those 19 assists put him top in the league for assists. And another player that we really can't count out of any game is Trent Miner. No, he's one of the top goalies in the league, that's for sure, including he has uh, two, sh two shutouts through 12 games in the season. And you never can count him out on any given play. No, Miner's making a major impact for the Wheat Kings tied for the league leading wins as well and another player that I would expect to be of major impact tonight would be Lyndon McCallum yeah he's just coming back from uh, from a start of the season with the WHL Week Kings where he came close to getting a few points but was held off the board and the week the AAA Week Kings certainly welcomed him back to the lineup so lots of excitement for the Brandon Week Kings and going in uh, Kenora's favor, they've got some offensive firepower as well. Their leading scorer, Dylan Windsor, with uh, 13 points in 14 games. So that's a fairly fairly decent start to the season as well for him. Yeah, Windsor's not at the not at the not at the back of the net eight times through 14 games this season for 13 points. And one of the one of the key things I'm seeing on this uh, Kenora roster is that they're not afraid of getting rough either. No, I, I see uh, many people with uh, well over 20 penalty minutes, including Dylan Windsor, who has 34. And you go all the way down the list, Jared Naniska, of course, the team leader in penalty minutes with 65. That's, that's, a, that's a lot of penalty minutes. So I'm just looking at this, I'm expecting special teams to be a major factor in today's game. Yeah, I'm expecting a chippy affair between the Thistles and the Wheat Kings here this afternoon, like you said, with all the penalty trouble the Thistles get into. It. And of course, like we've mentioned Trent Minor already, but I feel like even he doesn't get enough credit. He's at the last game against um, they, were, they were playing and Minor had to stand on his head for the Wheat Kings, which he did. Oh, he sure did. There were some anxious moments between when the last game when the Wheat Kings played the first period where they got up they got up to a quick lead, but then the momentum went went the other team's way and it completely switched around. Yellowhead had an absolutely outstanding first period and they they played a solid game the whole game. They just weren't able to get the bounces. No, that's for sure. And uh, that's the difference between a win and a loss in a lot of cases is teams that get the bounces. The Wheat Ex Kings were able to get the bounces, and Yellowhead just wasn't lucky enough the last game. So we'll be back in just a little bit with uh, Manitoba Midget AAA hockey action between the Brandon Wheat Kings and the Kenora Thistles. That's all coming up in just a little bit here on the Manitoba Sports Network.
SAR Sport and Recreation in Steinbeck. We're the Husqvarna Motorcycle, Polaris ORV, and Polaris Slingshot dealer. Along with full sales of new and used, we offer service, parts, and sales for everything. Come and see us in Steinbeck. Well, welcome back to the Brandon Sportsplex for AAA Midget Hockey League action. My name is Jared Thiessen. And I'm Travis Longman. And we have some exciting hockey coming up between the Brandon Wheat Kings and the Kenora Thistles. So I was taking another look at Kenora's team, and they seem to do a lot of scoring by committee. They're yeah, not really one that breaks out other than wins are there. Uh, him and Weatherspoon are leading the way with uh, eight and seven goals respectively, but it is a it is a team effort for the Thistles. Which, which is good since hockey's a team game to make sure you're getting goals from a lot of people, which the Wheat Kings are doing as well. Oh, that's for sure. They uh, have a full plethora of lines going here for both teams, really. Three guys with ten goals or more. And so maybe not as, not as well-spoken for the committee scoring, but they get, they get a lot of goals. And for teams to be truly successful, you need to divide the scoring up. You look at, even look at the NHL. You shut down one line, and if you're a one-line team, you're not going to do much. But Brandon, they're, they're off to a very hot start this year, and they have the guys that certainly could keep it going for them. Nolan Ritchie leading the way with the, for the team in points, as we mentioned. 2.27 points per game. That is unheard of. A lot of guys would be happy with just one point per game, but Nolan Ritchie is off to a very hot start this season. And Nolan, so Nolan Ritchie is actually a second-round pick of the major Brandon Wheat Kings, so that's that's quite, a, quite but, a feather in the cap, as one might say, for him. Oh, that's for sure. The, the major Wheat Kings have a couple of really good prospects here, as we mentioned earlier with McCallum and... Nolan Ritchie, the future's bright, bright even for the big club. It is indeed. So, I just want to know if you were if you were picking lineups for Wheat Kings, who would you probably who would you pull out for your top line? Um, I'd probably pick out definitely Nolan Ritchie and Paddock's off to a very good start here. He has 22 points through 14 games, and. And I'm kind of humming and hawing between Dylan Halliday and Calder Anderson. Calder's uh, scored a goal that really had no business going in the other day against Kenora. Just threw the puck on that, like like Don Cherry always says on Coach's Corner. And he was lucky enough, but later on in the game he had a breakaway and was able to bury that one for his second on the night. Calder, Calder Anderson has been quite spectacular really for the whole season so far yeah um, another moose jaw draft pick, right i yes he is so we have calder and uh damon hunt i was just uh speaking to his dad who is a really good defenseman he's played well i saw him play senior a lot and i'm from mooseman and he played a lot of senior in mooseman and i asked so who's the better player oh definitely damon that's what uh, doug said so the Wheat Kings have one of the best lineups I've seen in minor hockey. And Linda McCollum actually three only three games this season so far and nine points. Nine, nine points in three games. That's, that's so pretty impressive. Clear, clearly something is, has gone right for him between training, uh, training camp and the five games with the Wheat Kings. A little bit of a spark lit under him wanting to get back to the big club. That's that's pretty much probably the best way to describe it. Just having getting getting a taste and then you want more. Yeah. And you definitely can't argue with success. You definitely cannot and um, he'll definitely be looking for that to continue this afternoon to keep his tremendous point for your game streak going. Yeah, exactly. So the teams are out and this game should be getting ready to start underway in just a few minutes. And this 
is the Manitoba Sports Network covering AAA Midget Hockey Action here in Brandon. Welcome back to Midget Week Kings action right now. Ceremony for Remembrance Day going on in the corner of the arena. Across Canada and in many other countries around the world, people come together on this day, November 11th, to honor and remember the brave men and women and their families who have made and continue to make incredible sacrifices for our country. With this in mind, I would ask that everyone please rise and remove your hat for the last post, a moment of silence, and the rose. On this special day, I would ask that each and every one of you who loudly and proudly join Shannon Stewart in the scene of O Canada.
Well, once again, this is Jared Thiessen saying welcome back to the Brandon Sportsplex for Midget AAA hockey action on this Remembrance Day 2017. Looking forward to a great game, and the Wheat Kings and Thistles are both getting into their pre-game rituals and will be ready for the game in a very short amount of time. We sure will be. Both teams are just coming up to the face-off circle, and Brandon's heading back to their bench. So Keegan Watkins McIntyre gets to start tonight, and definitely looking for a solid performance from him. He has five wins through 14 games, so nothing to nothing to sneeze at. That's for sure. It's respectable numbers. Absolutely. So it looks like. It's McCollum, Sawchuck, and Paddock out to start for the Wheat Kings. And McCallum wins the draw, or Sawchuck rather. And the pass was sent across to Paddock. Paddock will pick it up, but he gives it away. And now the Thistles will try to bring it out. Looks like they're at the half wall now, three, four men battling. And the Thistles with a quick hit there. And looks like this game is going to be a feisty one and a Looks like a delayed penalty against the Thistles now. And there's the call. And that looks like cross-checking. So, Wheat King is going to the power play 29 seconds into the game. And this penalty kill is brought to you by Ferrum Fitness. And the power play brought to you by GT Hockey. So it's Sawchuck in the draw, and he can't pick it up. So the puck comes back to Damon Hunt at the blue line. Back to Hunt again. Hunt will pass it in right into the center for Nolan Ritchie, and there's a shot right off the draw. And good chance for the Wheat Kings right away on this power play. Hunt at the blue line. He'll pass it into off to the side, and that one will ring off the post for McCollum. And it'll come back to Hunt who will deflect it into the middle of the ice, and it'll be picked up by Dylan Windsor of the Thistles and thrown into the Wheat King's end. So there's number seven. That's uh, Nolan Ritchie will tip that one into the Thistles end, and it comes right back out. Thistles will throw that one, and it comes to Calder Anderson. Pass is thrown back to Anderson again, and he'll skate it in behind his own net and look to set up an offensive attack. The Wheat Kings have it on the far side now, and it'll be thrown right back down to uh, Watkins McIntyre, and he'll pass it in behind his own net. And Calder Anderson will drag it out again. Good penalty kill here so far for the Thistles. Brandon really hasn't been able to materialize much of a shot. One decent scoring chance there. Nathan Kitty tried to get it out, but it'll come right back to Calder Anderson, and Anderson will fire it in behind the Thistles net. And Kitty will try to get it out again, but it's stopped at the blue line by the Wheat Kings. Now in behind the net, the Wheat Kings have a hold on it, and they'll put it back out to the blue line, back to Calder Anderson. Anderson, he'll go D to D. And now Puck is set out in front, and the Wheat Kings couldn't generate the shot, and the Thistles will force it all the way out. Watkins McIntyre pressured hard there by number 19, uh, 18, Jamie Caron. So the Wheat Kings will regain the blue line. And there's number six, Braden Michael Chuck, and there's a shot, goes just over the net after the power play has expired. But a good chance for the Wheat Kings. Now a five man scrum along that half wall just in the corner. Now four men in there. And the Wheat Kings will get a hold on it again, and they'll try to force it deep, but they'll stay busy along the half wall. We mentioned in the in the pregame show that that would be a chippy affair, and it's looking to be that way so far, at least for the Thistles. Definitely appearing so. Here's number 18, Jamie Caron again. Caron will put that one ahead to Ben Hackle, who will deflect it into the Wheat Kings' end. And there's Jake Thompson, big Jake Thompson ragging the puck around and it won't get out across the blue line so the Thistles keep it in. Thompson will fire it across the ice to his offensive partner 
And it'll come up to Thompson again. And there's Mason Kaspik throwing it to Thompson. And Thompson leaves it for Collier. And the glove save made there by number 35, Cooper that play, Hatfield. That play was started by the rush from big, big. Big man Jake Thompson. He is a big man. How big would you say he, he is? is? Jake Thompson is six foot three. Is that on skates or no? That is off, that is not on skates. How tall would that be on skates then? That would be pretty close to six foot four, six foot five. Yeah. In a few years, he might be approaching that Zdeno Chara territory. He's, there. he's, he's a big getting guy. up. He's getting pretty close to that. So Drayson Collier in for the draw now. He's got Tanner Morrison and Mason Kaspik on either wing. Jackson Orr and Keegan Morrison behind him. There appears to be a problem with the net here. Looks like. So Cooper Hatfield wasn't wasn't happy with how the net was set, so we'll get the draw now. Puck comes back to Jackson Orr, who will put it in to the corner for Drayson Collier. Collier battling with Kaspik, and it looks like the Thistles will get a hold of it, and Caden Elliott will bring it out, and it's taken away by Keegan Morrison, who will throw it into the corner. And there's a big hit in the corner now. We Kings will bring that puck out. And there's Keegan Morrison passing it to his brother, Tanner Morrison. And Cooper Hatfield will cover before any damage is done. Good defensive play there by the Thistles to prevent a potential scoring chance for the Wheat Kings. Keegan Morrison knowing exactly where Tanner was and getting him the puck. Unfortunately, Tanner just couldn't grab the handle of it. Well, they had that chemistry that most most brothers do when they Usually. play sports. Usually, yeah. So the Thistles win the draw, but it's given away, and Damon Hunt will fire it into the end. And there's a bit of a late hit on Nolan Ritchie, but the Thistles will get a hold of it at the half wall. Wheat Kings hold it in, though, and they'll put it in behind the net, and in comes number 19, Colin Cook. Cook will put it back to the blue line to Hunt. Hunt will go to Rylan Thiessen, and Thiessen puts it off the pad of number 35, Cooper Hatfield. So the Wheat Kings getting some offensive pressure here. And they've got the puck out in front, and there's another shot, and Hatfield makes the save right in the breadbasket. But a, a great opportunity. I'm noticing that Hatfield's letting out a few too many rebounds here. He was, but uh, he'll be happy with himself there that he was able to cop up, cover up that scoring chance. There was there was definitely an opportunity to cover that that shot from the point uh, from Tyson, but he just couldn't grab it. So the Wheat Kings win the draw, and McCollum will fire it over. To number 22, Tanner Moore, uh, Thompson, but that shot doesn't get through to the net. There's a battle now along the wall, and a hunt will go back to his D partner, Rylan Thiessen. And the puck is thrown in front for the Wheat Kings, but nobody could get onto the end of it. So Thiessen is left to defend the Thistles' rush, and Jake Thompson is back now. There's a pad saved by Keegan Watkins McIntyre, and now a pass to Braden Michaelchuk that was just a little out of his reach, and the Thistles will pick it up in their own end. Mitch Thiessen couldn't intercept that pass, so the Thistles will pick it up again in their own end. Kitty passes off to number 21, Bryson McDonald. And the Wheat Kings will retreat to pick it up in their own end. Here's big Jake Thompson again. Thompson goes off the wall to Jared Twerdeklib. Twerdeklib tried a deflection pass, but he couldn't get it to go, and the puck will squirt in behind Watkins McIntyre's net. Thistles keep it in. This is number nine, Sullivan Short Reed. Now the Wheat Kings will pick it up but still in their own end. And Thompson tries to go off the wall, and there's a wide shot hard towards the net. Just couldn't quite put it on. Now battling is Jared Twerdeklib along the wall, and the puck will get away, and Mitch Thiessen will fire that one in long, far corner. Smart the, play there for the Wheat Kings. Just dump it down the ice to get the change. And they're, they were looking tired, so they needed it. And there's a shot from the side that almost was an opportunity to go in just goes through the crease. So the Wheat Kings now battling in the close corner, and now they've picked it up, and there's a pass into the opposite corner, and Tanner Morrison has it. Now he throws it in behind the Thistles' net, and the Thistles will pick it up and go off the boards and all the way down, and this one will be icing. Some solid opportunities for the Thistles there against Keegan Watkins McIntyre, and just going wide of the net, yeah, they uh, certainly put on the pressure there for, for the Wheat Kings. And again, that was, wasn't the best shift for the, for the Wheat Kings. There. Definitely not. 
But here we are, scoreless still, with 13.24 left in the first period. So a draw in the Thistle's end that they will win, and they'll throw it around the wall. And now it gets sent back into the corner. And the Thistles will pick it up at the other half wall. And now they'll send it out. But the pass is picked off by the Wheat Kings. And now they'll return. And they've got three men in the zone. Calder Anderson trying to set one up, but couldn't get it to go. And now they'll go, Wheat Kings will go off the wall. And Colin Cook will try to bring it in. But some chippy play at the blue lines, and Calder Anderson picks it up, and he'll carry it into the Thistle's end and dump it into the corner. Here's Nolan Ritchie behind the net, giving pressure, but nothing doing as the Thistles maintain possession. And go all the way, to, almost all the way down the ice. Damon Hunt picks it up after a good stop by Ryland Thiessen. So the puck comes right into Cooper Hatfield, and he'll play it out to his defenseman. And Keegan Watkins McIntyre comes out to play it, but it's icing. Both teams are still trying to figure, feel out each other in the early going here, and uh, evident by the chippiness of this contest thus far. And seven minutes and 42 seconds in, so you kind of expect that from a team that you haven't played before. Wheat Kings will collect the puck off the draw. That's Lyndon McCallum. McCallum goes back to the blue line, and that one will be shot in. Now it's picked up by Brett Paddock. Paddock picks it up at the half wall, tries to dump it in, but it's picked up and now taken away. And McCollum trying to, oh, lays the body there a little bit. And now it's scrum along the wall and it's given away and the Thistles will try to bring it out across their own blue line. Jackson Orr played it in for a little bit, but it's taken away by number 10, Cooper Witherspoon. And Wheat Kings get it back about their own blue line and they will try to play it out, but it's given away again, and the Kenora is, they're seeming to find their rhythm a little bit here. Mason Kaspik trying to dangle, but he can't hang on to it. So here comes Kenora again. They'll fire this one in the long way, and McIntyre, Watkins McIntyre will play it off his stick and into the corner. Now Brandon has it back across their own blue line. Wheat Kings fire that one in long ways, and Drayson Collier will go in to play it. Now it's Tanner Morrison in there battling with him. Now it's moving out along the corner and back into behind the net for Collier. And Collier will try the wraparound, but he can't get that one to go. Here's Mason Kaspik. Kaspik leaning into his man a little bit. And Collier will hold that one in back to Tanner Morrison. And Collier holds onto it again and trying to play it out to Morrison, but he couldn't find him. So Morrison will retreat in behind the... Kenora net, but Kenora will get a hold of it, and they will fire it out. Wheat Kings bring it back across, which that's Jake Thompson, but couldn't get it much further, and Kenora will fire it in behind Brandon's net. So the here come the Wheat Kings again. The puck seems to be bouncing all over the ice tonight. It really is. They're, oh, and a late hit. Looks like Braden Michaelchuk might be. Oh, the door opened after a hit. That's never safe for anyone, especially when you're around on that lip. That could really do some damage to your back. Yeah, no, you don't don't want to be going through the door or the glass, for that matter. Oh no, that's true. I've seen that a few times in the NHL. <laughs> So the Wheat Kings will pick it up off the faceoff, and Kenora trying to get it out, but Hatfield gets it as it bounces off the end boards back to him. And they'll manage to get a hold of it. So Hatfield covers, and there will be a faceoff to his left. 10 7 remaining in the first period, still scoreless. Shots are 5 to 2, Wheat Kings. So Kenora will get the puck off the boards and into the neutral zone. And here's Michael Chuck again. He will fire that one all the way down. And now the Wheat Kings giving chase. And Kenora will get that one out. Or, no, they'll get it along the half wall. And Michael Chuck is in there battling. And a lot of really, oh, now it's, now it's getting, things are getting personal out there. Yeah, definitely could have been a penalty out of that skirmish, but the ref lets both teams play. And wow, 
Talk about aggression. This game is getting ugly already. So Damon Hunt plays to his man, Ryland Thiessen. It sure could be a rough one, and we're seeing why <laughs> Kenora has a lot of penalties. So Kenora has the puck inside their own zone, and they'll try to fire it down. And didn't hear the sound of a stick, but no icing on that one. So the Wheat Kings now playing it, and here comes McCallum. McCallum brings it across the blue line. He beat his defenseman, but he's getting pushed around in the corner now. And here comes Brett Paddock with a solid body check to keep the puck inside the Thistles' end. So the Thistles, they'll try to play that one out to center. And now it's number 15, Ben Hackle, with it. And he'll fire it into the corner where Dylan Windsor was, but Windsor couldn't get a hold of it. And now the Wheat King's rushing out again. Nolan Ritchie will go far side and finds a man, and Ritchie is wide open for the goal! Nolan Ritchie with a goal, going short side on Cooper Hatfield. He doesn't miss many of those, and that's, that's his seventh of the season and 26 point. Nolan Ritchie does not miss from that area, especially with a perfect feed like that. He sure does not. Um, this, that goal is brought to you by my phone, your authorized Telus dealer in Verdon and two locations in Brandon. You're not going to see Nolan Ritchie or many of the Wee Kings players miss from there. No, the gaping hole, and he was able to bury it in the wide open 6 by 4 So the Thistles will fire it into the Wee Kings end. There's a turnover at the blue line, and the Thistles will bring it in, but it's directed away by the Wee Kings defenseman. So Nolan Ritchie with the goal, Paddock credited with the assist. And there's some heavy hits right in the corner on the half wall. This game is not going to stay this, this way. I'm, I'm certain we're going to see at least someone get thrown out at some point. It's sure looking that way. Either a hard hit that the ref deems unclean or, or dropping the gloves for a fight. Sure looking like there could be one. So the Wheat Kings had a close shot, but it's blocked away by Hatfield, and now the Thistles will come the other way, and they'll go in behind the net, fire it all the way around, and the Wheat Kings will get that one out across their own blue line. So now the Thistles back at their own blue line, and they'll try to regroup, and it goes all the way down, and another icing against Kenora. Kenora so, just struggling to find a pace to this game that can... Yeah, they haven't found their legs yet this afternoon. Of course, they did play last night as well. And with a long trip from Kenora, it's not not overly close to Kenora from here, but there are farther places. There are. So now there's a draw at to the right of Cooper Hatfield, and Kenora will fire the puck out again, and Jake Thompson retreats, and another icing. Another icing, and... But they they came from Suris to here, so that's like a 45 minute yeah, drive. Yeah, that's that's true. So I'm I'm struggling to see what what's going wrong for them right now. Evening game last night, early afternoon today. That that could be it. Maybe they weren't didn't get to have their coffee this morning. Or I don't I don't even drink coffee. I don't think any of these guys are old enough to drink coffee. Or their orange juice or whatever, whatever gets them going in the morning. True enough. So Kenora gets the puck in their own in their own zone. And there's a man in behind the net who's struggling to find his footing, but now the Wheat Kings get a hold of it in Kenora's end. And they'll put it out front. And the Wheat Kings with another solid opportunity there, just no one to connect on the other end of the pass. So some bad blood starting to boil here between the Wheat Kings and the Thistles. Yeah, I'd have to say the Thistles have a thorn on their side. So now a battle along the half wall. I appreciate that pun. And looks like the Wheat Kings will go for wholesale, uh, not wholesale, but defensive line changes. So here's Jackson Orr. He's got to skate hard back to his own zone to beat the checking of Thistles forwards. And now the Wheat Kings get it out across the blue line, and Lyndon McCallum will have to regroup back at his own blue line. And now it's sent up to Jackson Orr. Or was just a bit behind as Carter Sawchuk seemed to be just a step ahead of him. 
nice tape to tape pass though hit or right in stride shame they were offside for, for the Wheat Kings that's that's one thing you never have to wonder about is whether the Wheat Kings passing game is on top of it because they've been that's one thing that you can never never say enough good about for the Wheat Kings game who do you say is the best passer on the team the best passer on the team probably Nolan Ritchie as evident by his league leading assists so now there's a battle in the corner for the Wheat Kings and Thistles, and there's four men in. And now Calder Anderson trying to escape with the puck, and he'll send it up for his man, Jared Twerderclip, and there's a wraparound, just couldn't get it to go. And now the Thistles will try to go off the wall and out, but now they'll try the pass instead. So looks like a penalty in behind the play, and the Thistles have the puck in Brandon's end. And now we'll get the call. And it looks like a slash. So the Wheat Kings take a slashing call. And... And this penalty kill is brought to you by Ferrum Fitness. So it's going against Calder Anderson. A, a guy you don't really expect that to happen to. No, you expect him to be putting the puck in the back of the net or setting up some goals, not spending time in the sin bin. So Calder Anderson with it looks like his sixth Wheat minor of the season. 14, and Wheat Kings go to the penalty kill. Now the Thistles will try to bring it right up the middle. And that's good defense there by Jared Twerdeklib getting the puck into the corner. So now it's Sullivan Shortreed battling for it in the corner. Now it's five men in. And Dylan Windsor will bring it out but now he's getting pushed around behind the net and they'll go to the blue line it's now Bodner Bodner with a shot and it looked like it might have gone off of the leg of Brett Paddock yeah he's uh, skating a little gingerly out there feeling the effects of that shot for sure so the Thistles will regroup and they'll go far side Bodner will keep that one in And the Thistles passing game is just a bit off. They're not uh, hitting their man quite with the accuracy they need to be. And that one deflects out in front of the Wheat Kings net. So the Thistles still trying to generate a shot on this power play. And there it goes as the Wheat Kings will finally get a clear with 40 seconds to go on this power play for the Thistles. Give the Wheat Kings some credit though. They're able to get in the passing lanes and shut down and they haven't had it registered a shot yet on the power play. So that's pretty solid defense. Yeah. So the Thistles pick it up at the half wall and they'll try to rag it around and the Wheat Kings will get it just out across the blue line. So now they have to reset. The Thistles will come back to their own blue line with about 10 seconds to go on this power play. They'll bring it across center and fire it down. And it will be picked up in the corner. So the Thistles now battling in behind the net. Three-man, four-man battle, but it'll come away. And Calder Anderson will get a chance to play it, but he can't get it out. So now the Thistles battling at about the blue line. And Carter Sawchuk is hauled down in behind that play. And Keegan Watkins McIntyre makes the save on a long, so on a long shot. And the Wheat Kings will get a hold of it. Wheat Kings tried to go a stretch pass there and it'll be missed so it'll be icing and a face off down in the Wheat Kings end to the right of Keegan Watkins McIntyre. 2.53 remaining here in the first period. The score remains 1-0 for the Brandon Wheat Kings. Shots on goal are 8-4 in favor of the home side. And the Wheat Kings just seem to be the better team right now and more disciplined. Yeah, and there's that, a shot from right in close and Watkins McIntyre makes the save off his shoulder now there's a battle at the half wall and in the corner goes Wheat Kings now that puck is sent out to the blue line and it was almost picked off by the Thistles and now they will pick it up and send it back into the corner and another late hit by the Thistles and that one is going to draw a penalty And stuff over here. looks like they're going at it. There is definitely some roughness going on in there. And look at Calder Anderson coming in. 
Calder's a good team, guys. We'll always stand up for a teammate. So there's definitely going to be offsetting penalties here. But I'm not sure where the first, if the first one might come into play as well. A little bit of chirping going on, and there's been one man sent off already. A few words to the Wheat King's bench as he skates by, too. So that's Naniska. Uh, that's his sixth. This, uh, 67. Assuming he doesn't get a major, this will be 67 penalty minutes for him. Well, he does look like uh, he did do some chirping out to the Wheat Kings, so does look to be a bit of an agitator, that's for sure. And also four points on the year, so he's, it's not like he's a one-dimensional player. No, he has a complete game, and what is it? He can hurt you on the scoreboard, or he can hurt you by delivering a hit. Def definitely hurt you physically. He can also hurt his own team by taking too many penalties, that's for sure. Yeah, six, 67 penalty minutes. When I look at that, because I don't, I haven't seen, I've seen a couple majors already assigned this year, but not many. And to have 65 penalty minutes already, you, you would have to have taken a few of them by now. In 13 games. 65 and 13, what's the average there? That's, that's five. That's five penalty minutes a game. So he's either getting in some fights or... Gonna, but I think, I think a fight means you're taken out of the game. So that would be like 15 penalty minutes. So Good point. Yes. Oh, it is a major. So a major going against Cole Jordan. Or Cole Jordan's in the box. But I think the major goes against... Um, Calder Anderson. For being the third man in, maybe. Could be. So the Wheat Kings get the draw, but the Thistles were pressuring hard, and there's a cross check as the Wheat Kings will try to carry it. So Jackson Orr gets the five minute major for head, uh, head contact and game misconduct. So it was not Calder Anderson. It was not Calder Anderson, it was Jackson Orr. So the Wheat Kings now with some heavy pressure and some decent opportunities right out in front. Damon Hunt will now get it at the blue line and there's back to McCollum. McCollum put it towards the net and Sawchuck deflected it, but it'll be stopped by Cooper Hatfield. So a minute 41 left in the first period. It's currently one nothing Wheat Kings. Jackson Orr with a five minute major for head contact and a game misconduct. And Jared Naniska taking two minute roughing call. So there's a shot from the point from Jake Thompson that just went a little bit wide and the pass comes right back to him. Thompson with a slap shot, that one goes just over the net. And Keegan Wa uh, Morrison misses the and it'll come back. And Watkins McIntyre with a shot gives up the rebound. But well, that one goes over top of the net. A solid opportunity for the Thistles to tie this game up on the power play. Well, not on the power play because they're still down a man 58 seconds. Well, he put, he put that one in the net, but the wrong net even if you're a Thistles fan. <laughs> exactly. So we're back with a face-off to the right of Keegan Watkins McIntyre, who is definitely thankful for that shot going over the net. And there's a shot again, and that one will come right into his chest, and he'll make that save. And he'll make that save nine times out of ten. No traffic in front of him, and most, most goalies will, actually. Most, most goalies, that's not really an issue. But if I, w if I was a goalie, I'd probably let that one in. Well, me too. But <laughs> That's why I'm not a goalie. Same here. So the Thistles will win the draw and they'll go out to the blue line and somehow it squirts out across the blue line and they'll have to regroup. So the Thistles pick it up now. It's at Brandon's blue line. 
and sent in. And the Wheat Kings will bring it across their own blue line. Now across the Thistles blue line and trying to drive wide of the defenseman there. And the Thistles will pick it up in their own end. So here they come again and they'll almost got it across center. And now it's Drayson Collier racing in. He's got a man. And there's a shot and that one is in. Drayson Collier picks up a rebound from number 15, Damon Hunt. And the Wheat Kings are back on the board. It's 2-0 with 37 seconds to go. Drayson, Drayson Collier was Johnny on the spot for that goal. A perfect rebound from Jackson or uh, Damon Hunt. Yeah, Hadfield made the first few stops, but he was unable to get back in time for the one that went in the back of the net. That's, that's an outstanding shot. I'm, and just to be aware of where you need to be in that situation. So the Wheat Kings win the draw, but it comes all the way back into their corner, so Jared Twerdeklib will be forced to retreat and try to help pick it up. Now the Thistles try to feed it out in front, but it'll be intercepted, and Twerdeklib will go back behind his net, and he'll feed Keegan Morrison. Morrison couldn't get a hold of it, and now the Thistles will pick it up again, and looks like the Wheat Kings had it, or the Thistles rather, had an opportunity to put it towards the net, and Sawchuck will get around his man, and he just can't grab the puck as he's held back a little bit. And this is a penalty kill for the Brandon Wheat Kings, and this penalty kill is brought to you by Ferrum Fitness. So it's the end of the first period. The Wheat Kings with two goals that just astound me, to be honest. I did not expect just the effort that they've had coming out of the first period. Yeah, Brandon played hard. Well, both teams really have played really hard this period, and uh, I need to mention that the second goal is brought to you by my phone, your authorized Telus dealer in Verdon, and two locations in Brandon. So, outstanding first period. 11-7 to 7 the shots for the Wheat Kings. And we will have more with your second period summary here on the Manitoba Sports Network in just a little bit. SAR is Sport and Recreation in Steinbeck. We're the Husqvarna Motorcycle, Polaris ORV, and Polaris Slingshot dealer. Along with full sales of new and used, we offer service, parts, and sales for everything. Come and see us in Steinbeck. from Melanie Bond and Athletic Therapy. I deal with rehab here and one of the treatments that I use is massage, some mobilizations and there are many other techniques that I take care of to help heal injuries. I treat sports injuries, workplace injuries, motor vehicle accident injuries and I direct bill to MPI, WCB and other third-party insurers. Thank you, come see us. Welcome to MB Seeds. I'm Matt and this is B, and we're a family run business. We've been operating since 2012 and we sell canola, soybeans, corn, wheat, barley, oats, and peas. 
We also run a cleaning facility on site just south of Low Farm where we can clean almost anything that you can grow. Come check us out today. Welcome back to the Brandon Sportsplex. My name is Jared Thiessen and joining me is Dylan Halliday again. And Dylan, thanks for doing this again. Yeah. So how's your winter been going so far? Uh, pretty good, yeah. Awesome. So your team is up 2-0. You guys have had a solid first period. What did you, what did you think of the, uh, the, penal the penalty kill and the power play as a whole? Uh, pretty good. Uh, uh, shows that practice really starting to pay off for our team. Coach really uh, stresses uh, good special teams, and that's what we're trying to prove in this game. And you guys have spent goodness knows how how much time working to make sure that you're ready for games. So, how much time, on average, for a practice would you spend working on special teams with Coach Tyson Ramsey? Uh, we try to do our last practice of the week just focusing on special teams so we can get that stuff perfect uh, for the weekend. And so how often would you would you uh, practice? Uh, three times a week. Three times a week? Yeah. And you spend a whole day working on yeah. special teams? Yeah. Oh, my. So you've, you've, def you've definitely made sure you put in work to make sure you're ready to go. Yeah. And it's definitely proven by your spot in the standings, number one in the league, yeah. the Brandon Wheat Kings team, as well as kind of the, some of the statistical things. I know you, as players you, you don't focus so much on that. But is it is it a special thing for you guys to see that how much your work is paying off on the stat sheets? Yeah, for sure. Uh, we were, our goal at the start of the year was to be in the top of the league, and uh, we hope to stay that way for the rest of the season. Well, you guys are definitely well on your way to doing that. And uh, Kenora is a solid. They've got a pretty solid roster, yeah. and we kind of expected a bit of a chippy game yeah. from them. So. What is your what is your team's mentality coming now into the second period? Well, they're a big, strong team, so uh, we just try to stick to our game plan, get pucks deep, uh, put pucks on the net, and uh, try to win this game. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining me, Dylan, and have a great rest of the game. Yeah. We will be back with your period first period summary brought to you by CM Engraving.
Are you looking for trophies or medals for your next hockey tournament? Then call CM Engraved today, 204-224-2416. They have the best prices in Manitoba, cmengraved.ca. They ship all over Manitoba, and you will not be sorry you called. Hi, I'm Cassandra Carrier with Fire and Fitness. We're located in Ildishay, Manitoba. We do everything from personal training, group training classes, yoga and flexible steel. We also focus on young athletes. We do not only just the strength and conditioning, but the agility, power, rotational control and strength, and flexibility, stability, and mobility is always super important. You can find us at fairmfitness.ca and come check us out. SAR is Sport and Recreation in Steinbeck. We're the Husqvarna Motorcycle, Polaris ORV, and Polaris Slingshot dealer. Along with full sales of new and used, we offer service, parts, and sales for everything. Come and see us in Steinbeck. Well, welcome back to the Brandon Sportsplex. My name is Jared Thiessen, and this is your period summary brought to you by CM Engrave. Are you looking for trophies or medals for your next hockey tournament? We call CM Engrave today, 204-224-2416. They have the best prices in Manitoba, cmengrave.ca. They ship all over Manitoba. You will not be sorry you called. So, Travis, the first period com coming to an end a few minutes ago, and we had some solid, solid offense from the Wheat Kings. And the defense on both teams was fairly solid as well. Just the two minor lapses on the goals. And we have the goal from Dil uh, Drayson Collier on a rebound, making it 2 nothing. What were, what were just your thoughts on that period? Well, a big concern for Kenor is Hatfield has to be a lot better on his rebounds. It, it is t only 2 nothing. But his rebound control it really could be a lot more in favor of the weekend. And Keegan Watkins McIntyre kind of leaving a few rebounds out there. Uh, that one rebound that went over the net and hitting the mesh behind. So definitely some some areas for both teams to clean up on. But it's Triple A midget. Even in the NHL, there's areas for a lot of teams to clean up. Oh, absolutely. Up on. So. The Wheat Kings took how many penalties in that period? I think it was one. It was just the, the just, major just game misconduct yeah. from uh, for Cole Jordan, which the Kenora Thistles will still be on the power play coming out of the coming into the second period. Yeah, that's right. They have a 2:39 remaining on their on their power play. There, I'm gonna say this: they they need to score on that power play in order to remain in this game. Otherwise, if Brandon gets to three, uh, that's a pretty high hill for them to climb. So, the one thing about a major power play, though, for the Thistles is if they do score, they still have another opportunity with the man still in the box. Right, yeah, they can score as many 
as ever, many times as he can with the majors. So they need at least one on this belt. Absolutely. And the Kenora took two penalties in that period. And there just wasn't... The discipline wasn't there for them. No, they, they haven't been a very disciplined team all year, like we mentioned in our pregame show. They, there is a... There's a number of players that have taken far more penalties than they need to have. Yeah, in, including, like we talked about, Naniska. He's up to 67 on the year. And that um, the roughing call against him is not going to help his team whatsoever. So that's something that definitely needs to be cleaned up as the season progresses. The shots for that period were 11 for Brandon and 7 for the Thistles. So another area that maybe they should concentrate on is their puck control when they're inside the zone and passing it around. Yeah, the puck seems to be bouncing all over everyone. Well, not just for Kenora either. It's pretty bouncy over. We'll see what a new new coat of new sheet of ice here in Brandon. We'll see what difference it makes for both teams. So the teams are back out on the ice now. This period, for, uh, first period summary brought to you by CM Engrave. You looking for trophies and medals for your next hockey tournament? You can call CM Engrave today, 204-224-2416. They have the best prices in Manitoba, cmengrave.ca, and they ship all over Manitoba, and you will not be sorry you called. So the Wheat Kings lining up now with four men on the ice. And so the player of the month for October is being presented today before the second period begins. And it's presented to number 17, Brett Paddock, who has been outstanding for the team to start the season. 22 points in 14 games, 11 goals and assists each. On top of that, only eight penalty minutes. So congratulations to Brett Paddock on that. Congratulations, Brett. So Brett Paddock receiving the Week King of the Month award. And we will get underway with this hockey game once again, once Paddock is back out on the ice. So he's back out on the ice now, and Drayson Collier and Jared Torticlip behind. So the Thistles win the draw, they'll set the play up. And there's an attempted pass, but it's picked off and sent back down by Jake Thompson. So the Thistles now in their own end, and they're trying to pick a pass there, and they can't get it, and the Wheat Kings will fire it all the way down, and Cooper Hatfield tries to play it, but it gets away through him. And now there's a battle in the corner, so the Thistles will come away with it. And now they'll bring it out across their own blue line and dump it across the Wheat Kings at the half wall now. And Wheat Kings, there's a solid stand-up body check by Jake Thompson, or Drayson Collier, rather. Jake Thompson now laying the body in behind, trying to sacrifice to get the puck out of the zone. So the Thistles get it back to the blue line. There's Bodner. Bodner sends it down to Windsor. Windsor with the pass, and it's deflected away by Collier and almost out, but Thistles will keep it in, and now it's in behind the net. And the Thistles with an opportunity. There's a slap shot, and that one goes just wide of the net and broke his stick on that play. So now Wheat Kings get it all the way out and back down to Cooper Hatfield. Hatfield with it in his feet, and he couldn't get it. So Nolan Ritchie had an opportunity to score there. So now Ritchie is offside and the Wheat Kings will come back in an attempt to put on the pressure. So now the Thistles carrying it out of their off, their defensive end, and they'll fire it in to the Wheat Kings end. Keegan Watkins McIntyre will stop it and hang on for a faceoff. Lucky break there for the Wheat Kings a couple minutes ago. The, there was a wide open hole in the net. Uh, unfortunately, if you're a Thistles fan, the, you just wound up and a stick broke. It was a solid shot. The Wheat Kings had a great opportunity. 
So the Thistle will get it off the draw back to the blue line, and there's a sh long shot, but it's stopped by the Wheat Kings. And now it's Nolan Ritchie getting it. He's in on a breakaway, and the puck just got away from him, and then he fans on the shot. And a solid shorthanded opportunity for the Wheat Kings. And now there's 45 seconds to go in this power play for the Thistles. You don't see Nolan Ritchie do that too much. You don't see him miss, no. The Thistles will get it at the Wheat Kings blue line, but it gets just out, and now the Thistles will retreat into their own end. 30 seconds to go on this power play, and not a whole lot has been mustered for them. The Wheat Kings have more momentum coming out of it. Damon Hunt plays that one off the wall, and it looks like it was deflected down by a high stick. And the ref is gonna the ref is gonna call that. 17 seconds remaining here in the Wheat Kings penalty, and so far so good for the home squad. The Wheat Kings, the Wheat Kings penalty kill has looked solid throughout this five-minute major, and they have absolutely no reason to be uh, walking away with their tails between their legs after this one. Oh, that's for sure. Kenora doesn't even have a shot right so far this period. So the Wheat Kings will get it back out to center. And the Thistles will fire that one in, but it's deflected right back out by the Wheat Kings defenseman. And there's Thompson firing it all the way down to Cooper Hatfield. Hatfield will stop it. Looked like it was in his feet, but it will be stopped, and the Thistles will get it back out. So here they come again. The Thistles bring it across the Wheat Kings' blue line, but there's a heavy hit there by Brett Paddock, and the Wheat Kings will regain control. Showing why he was the Wheat Kings' player of the month. Here's Carter Sawchuk. Sawchuk leaves it for Paddock, and there's a glove save as the Wheat Kings get a great shot, and Cooper Hatfield makes the stop. Must have heard us talking about his rebound control. Must have. He was, because he was right and ready for that shot, staying square to the puck. So, the second period is brought to you by Melanie Bond Athletic Therapy. Forgot to mention that before. So, Wheat Kings will get a hold of the draw, and now it's in the corner. Cooper Hatfield will deflect that one back into the corner. Now it goes opposite side, and the Thistles will try to get it out of their own end. And they will. They get it across the blue line. And they will fire it all the way into the Wheat King's end. Keegan Morrison couldn't get on in the end of that pass from his man. And now it's Drayson Collier laying the body after the fact. And here come the Thistles again. There's a slap shot from the side, and Keegan Watkins McIntyre makes the blocker save. And Body had the puck, but he didn't and now it'll go into the corner. So the Wheat Kings will fire it out across their blue line and Thistles will uh, retreat and pick it up at their blue line. So there's Mason Kaspic and uh-oh, late bad hit. Appear to be an elbow to the head from what I saw. And that's not gonna go over well. There's a bit of yelling going on on the Thistles bench and Tanner Morrison is gonna get, I'm gonna guess probably a major for contact to the uh, intentional head contact. Well, maybe not Maybe not intentional, I, I don't say that. But, it man, it's still shaking up. Yeah, it's never good when the trainer has to come onto the ice, that's for sure. Never good. So it looks like the man down is number 17, Caden Illiot. Illa, Illo. And just a scary situation. So Brett Paddock looks like he's trying to plead his man's case. But I don't really think there's a whole lot of pleading that will work in this case. Just a bad penalty. And looks like Morrison's getting the gate. So a second game misconduct for the Wheat Kings today. Couple big losses too for the Jackson Orr and now Tanner Morrison. That's two of their defensemen. So they're down to a four man, a four defensive man bench. Thankfully, the Thistles man is up. I was wrong. That's number 19, Jared Naniska. That was that was down with head contact. No, it's Ben Hackle. Number 15, Ben Hackle. He's back on the bench now. But the way he's looking, I can't, I can't imagine him staying there. No, I'd be, I'd be surprised if he's not seeking medical attention or if he goes back in the game. But having said that, stranger things have happened. This is true. But Tanner Morrison 
five minute major and a game misconduct for a contact to the head. And another major to kill off for the Wheat Kings. Nolan Ritchie gets it out to the blue line and almost got it out across the blue line. This, pen this penalty kill is brought to you by Farm Fitness. So now the shot comes from the point and Watkins McIntyre with a blocker or pad save. And that one will deflect all the way out. And the Thistles will have to restart this power play. So they'll fire it in and Watkins McIntyre will come out to play it and he'll fire it around the wall. And it almost got out and it did. So it looks like the Wheat Kings now have to battle and the face off will come outside as Kenora touched up. So the face-off comes all the way down into the Thistle's end. So the face-off. Thistle's end just to the left of Cooper Hatfield. And four minutes and ten seconds left on this power play for the Thistles. Drayson Collier and Brett Paddock, the forward uh, penalty killers for the Wheat Kings. Collier. He's a tough little guy. You don't want to end up battling him in the corner. No, he's having a really good game today for the weekends. And Collier got hauled down and behind the play, but the Thistles will pick it up and get it out across their own blue line. Paddock kind of interfered with a bit by Bodner. So now the Wheat Kings, they will pick it up in their own end. They'll go off the wall all the way back down to Cooper Hatfield. Hatfield will play it off to his defenseman. That's number 18, Jamie Curran. The Thistles, we got the puck in. Now the Wheat Kings will pick it up. Now it's a three on two, or three on three rather. And Colin Cook will bring it across the blue line. And there's a shot. That was Damon Hunt, not Colin Cook, rather. And pick the shot comes back to Cooper Hatfield, and he'll cover up. Wheat Kings with a solid shot. They're shorthanded here. It's Kenora that needs to score on this power play, but Brandon so far with the best chance. Braden Michaelchuk getting into it a little bit with some of the other guys, the Kenora Thistles players. So Tyson Ramsey will call his line off, and it'll be Colin Cook and Tanner uh, Mason Kaspik. So. Tanner's his brother. No, Tanner Morrison. Tanner Morrison and Keegan Morrison, and then Mason Casper. Oh, that Cas that that Tanner. Tanner yes. Kaspik. Yes, Tanner Caspic is his brother. So here come the Thistles again. They've got the puck in behind the net. And good pressure there by Mason Caspic trying to get the Thistles off the puck. And now the attempted drive is cut off, and the Wheat Kings are keeping their defense solid. Now the Thistles with a shot at the blue line and Colin uh, Mason Kaspik will deflect that one and the puck goes back into the Thistles end. Kaspik with a solid shift on the penalty kill here. So now the Thistles bring it back across Brandon's blue line and they have it in the corner. And it'll squirt back just out across the blue line. So the Thistles will hold on to it, but they give it away, and here comes Jake Thompson. Jake Thompson breaking in wide, and there's a shot that goes just wide of the net. And he got hauled down after the play, and no doubt he's not happy about that. No, that was a big Jake Thompson there that was hauled down. And on a breakaway. You don't see that every day, I don't think. No, do you? you do not. Jake Thompson, not really a scoring player, um, but... But he's made some big plays this afternoon. So he far. has. He's he's a big man, and he's not afraid to play the body. And he also gets a little bit of offensive work in, too. So the Thistles will fire it back in across the Wheat King's blue line, but it's icing once more. Yeah, Jake Thompson does not have a goal yet this season. And I think he'll get one or two before the end of the year, at least. I think so. He had two last year in 40 games. 
How many games has he played so far? 12. So this year he's off to a better start than last year already. With four points in 12 games. So the Thistles bring it out across their own blue line. They'll fire it down into the Wheat King's end. And it's shot out by the Wheat King's penalty kill. And Wheat King's will get forward line changes. So the Thistles, they're back on the offensive attack. And that one will get out to Calder Anderson, who somehow gets it away. And off to Nolan Ritchie. Nolan Ritchie breaking in with a shot from the side. And the puck will deflect out front. Just couldn't get there because of a man holding him back. So the Thistles really struggling with that passing game on the offensive breakout. And Calder Anderson will get the puck and he'll fire it off to Damon Hunt. Hunt brings it across the blue line and he tries to go through the two men. And there's a shot, just doesn't get on net. And looks like another penalty towards the Thistles. Damon Hunt doing wonderful things with the puck. They're just trying to create that scoring chance. He was able to draw the penalty, though. Driving through the middle is exactly what the Wheat Kings need to do. Damon Hunt making a solid effort to get towards the net and drawing a penalty. So now the Wheat Kings... Showing one of the many reasons why it was a first-round draft pick in the so WHL. Caden Illiot, or Caden Illit is in the box. So the Wheat Kings are now playing four on four hockey. This was penalty number 17, Caden Eilat. Two minutes for hooking. I'm in a penalty, 12 3 And so the Wheat Kings get the puck at the blue line and they will have to retreat back to their own blue line and it's almost given away but they'll hang on to it. Lynn McCollum gets it off to Jack, uh, Cole Jordan, and there's a def shot deflected, and Cole Jordan scores! Good second effort there by Jordan, was, and he was able to bury the rebound. Cole Jordan with another great opportunity as the Wheat Kings come away with the goal. And Brett Paddock starting the play, Lyndon McCollum and Keegan Morrison, the four-on-four -four line out there. What a, what a play. I I didn't expect that from Cole Jordan. No, me neither, but he was just Johnny on the spot, or Cole on the spot for that matter. <laughs> Able to pot home the loose rebound and give his team a 3-0 advantage here midway through the second period. Cole Jordan with his third goal of the season on the on the four on four. Now it's Drayson Collier chasing. Cole Jordan, assist number 17, Rick Paddock. And number 27, Keegan Morrison. So Keegan Morrison and Brett Paddock get the assists on that one. That goal brought to you by MyPhone, your authorized TELUS dealer in Verdon and two locations in Brandon. So it's 3-0 Wheat Kings with 11 minutes to go in this first, uh, second period. Keegan Morrison gets the puck away and it'll come right back to him. There's a minute... On the Wheat Kings, they have a power play. And now Carter Sawchuk driving wide, and Cooper Hatfield makes the stop. And there's another shot that Hatfield will stop easily. This power play is brought to you by GT Hockey. A little bit of uh, pushing and shoving going on after the whistle, but nothing will come out of that. Great effort, though, by the Wheat Kings. Uh, number 16, Carter Sawchuk, driving the net and trying to put up a little more offense on that scoreboard. 57 seconds to go on this power play. Thistles yep. get the draw and they'll force it into the corner, but now there's three Wheat Kings battling. And now another Thistles man brings it out and tried to carry it across the blue line, but he couldn't. And now it's Carter Sawchuk again. He'll put the puck to the blue line. Down to Keegan Morrison, goes D to D. With Damon Hunt, Morrison will now go down low to Drayson Collier. Collier back to Morrison. Morrison will go to Damon Hunt. Hunt back to Morrison, and there's a shot from Morrison, and that one trickles just wide of the net. And that's Calder Anderson. Calder Anderson couldn't quite catch the pass from Keegan Morrison, and now Morrison will fire it in just barely across the Thistles' blue line, and Calder Anderson will fire it in. And gives a bit of a shove. 
after the play, but now it's offside. Down to 11 seconds on this power play, and I really like the Wheat King's puck movement. Yeah, it's been a lot better this period, and um, Hadfield's real. Well, as the song's playing right now, trying to find a way to survive, Hadfield, I'd have to say, is the way to survive for Kenora. But you need to survive by score some goals. Help, help him out a little. So the puck goes all the way down into the Wheat King's end as that penalty expires to Cody Illett. And the Wheat Kings will bring it back now. So now the puck is fed right across to Lyndon McCollum, who takes a shot off the glass. McCallum just not not shooting where he needs to. He was just a little over the net there, and it bounced off the glass and out of play. Yeah, that one that one didn't miss by too much though. And showing why he was a uh, at Wheat Kings camp and played a few games with and him, made the roster. It's all the shot, just not gonna happen on that one. So Mason Kaspik gets the puck off the draw and tries to drive wide on the defenseman. And the Wheat Kings will still hold it in. Nolan Ritchie firing it in, and now it's Kaspik again. But now the Thistles will get a hold of it, and Jake Thompson fires it right back in. And now it's Nolan Ritchie playing it at the blue line. Ritchie goes to Calder, uh, not Calder Anderson. And here's Thompson. Jake Thompson fires just a little wide of the net again. Wheat King is just not hitting the net. Now it's a two on one, and Thompson catches up with his man just in time, and the puck squirts in. Unfortunate bounce there for the Wheat Kings, and just found the way to the wrong stick. Looks looks to me like it it really wasn't. It, I mean, I wouldn't blame the goalie on this one. It looked like the puck just kind of slid through the massive bodies, and Watkins McIntyre just couldn't find it. Yeah, just a bad break there for the Wheat Kings defense. It looked like. The uh, play was going good for them, and the puck squirted it through, and there was a Thistle player there to bury it. Just where he wasn't. And it was such a great defensive effort by Jake Thompson, too, to get back defensively. Thistle's goal scored by number six, Aiden Shumka. Assist number 16. So the goal goes to number six, Aiden Shumka. Coming to goal, 19. So the Wheat Kings now lead it three to one. So they just certainly did what you said they needed to do, Travis. They got on the board. Now they need to do that a few more times to help Co uh, Cooper Hatfield. Trying to find a way to survive. So now there's a battle in behind the Thistles net and they'll pick it up at the half wall. They'll get it out across the blue line and it's dropped down there by Colin Cook. Cook will get it across the blue line, and the Wheat Kings will fire it into the corner. So now there's a battle along the wall. And the Wheat Kings will try to center it, but it'll be dropped there by number 22, Sean Gula. And Gula trying to just stand over Colin Cook there. And now Damon Hunt retreats for the puck, and he'll fire it all the way around. And just out of, and not quite out of the Wheat King's end, but it will be forced out. And now there's a penalty coming up against Kenora again. That's Jared Naniska again. The 69th penalty one of the year, barring a uh, power play goal. Jared Naniska with his second penalty of the game, and I've I've never seen anything like this. A guy who just kind of runs around recklessly and doesn't. Uh, yeah, the six foot one ninety forward. He's always finds his way to the penalty box. It seems. And this time it's for holding. So, Kenora will fire that one out. This power play brought to you by GT Hockey. So the Wheat Kings will retreat, and now Lyndon McCollum brings it across the blue line. And he'll put it into the corner for Mason Kaspik. Kaspik battling still, 
and he'll finally get it out of the scrum, and now he'll turn back, trying to put it for even deeper. And now Kaspic still battling in the corner, and looks like Carter Sawchuk will get it out to Brett Paddock. Paddock to Hunt, back to Paddock, and now it's fired all the way across to McCallum. McCallum to Paddock. Paddock, back to Hunt, and Hunt goes to McCallum, and McCallum takes the shot, but that one will deflect over the net. And now the Wheat Kings will pick it up in the corner. Uh-oh. Looks like the Wheat Kings are getting called after a piece of a stick got knocked away. And this is going to be number 18, Lyndon McCallum. And that's... McCallum's first penalty of the season but I don't know I don't know what happened I'm guessing he must have played with, with a broken stick or it was a broken stick that got involved. there wasn't broken stick and I'm guessing he moved it and you're not allowed to do that so you're supposed to set up in a different area yeah but right. that's a penalty to the Wheat Kings unsportsmanlike conduct and this penalty kill is brought to you by Fan Fitness. So the Wheat Kings now have it in behind Kenora's net. And Carter Sawchuk will bring it out in front and go to the blue line. And there's a shot, a bit of a floater as it doesn't even make the net. And Kenora will try to bring it out now. And now it's Mason Kaspik again, throwing it off to Carter Sawchuk. Sawchuk bringing it across the blue line and drove to the net, just couldn't get around his defenseman. And now Drayson Collier. Collier will play it. And the faceoff comes back to Brandon's end. On a delayed offside, the puck isn't supposed to go all the way back for a faceoff. It's supposed to be at the blue line that it that the face that the offside occurred. So this is rather puzzling to me. Yeah, I'm not sure what rule book they're, they're looking at here. Or? So Drayson Collier and, or not Nate Drayson Collier, Nolan Ritchie rather, was out to take the face off, but he can't get it. Now the Wheat Kings will fire, uh, the Thistles rather fire, and that one will go wide of the net. So now the Thistles have it down in the corner. It's a five on four, and Keegan Watkins McIntyre with a close save. The rebound gets out, and now there's a shot. That one will go up and over the net. 49 seconds remaining on the penalty kill for the Wheat Kings. They Now that's looking like they're on their heels and Kenora has a large amount of pressure here. And it didn't even seem sound like there was a deflection for that puck going out of the, out of play. No, it seemed like it went clear out right into the mesh. So technically, not even technically, that's, that's the delay of game. But I'm not the ref, so I don't make that call. So the Thistles can't hold the puck in as it comes around, and they'll have to retreat all the way to their own end to pick up the puck. So the Thistles will fire that one up. And beating his man, that's number 10, Cooper Witherspoon. But now a battle in the corner, and there's a hit by Jake Thompson. And there's a shot that doesn't get through, and the Wheat Kings now trying to rag it and get it out. But the, they can't. The Thistles will pick it up. And now it's in behind the Wheat Kings net. Jake Thompson will get it. And he'll go backhand it to Colin Cook. Cook will get that one. And the Wheat Kings will go hold, uh, for a change. But Mason Kaspik is a bad time to change. And Watkins McIntyre will drop down to glove that one for the faceoff. 4.45 remaining here in the second period. Shots on goal are 11 six, or 16-11 in favor of the... Brandon Wheat Kings. Wheat Kings have been struggling to shoot because that's five shots with four minutes, with just over under five minutes to go. They've also been in penalty trouble. Though, they too, have. Right? They have been. That kills momentum big time. Carter Sawchuk ties up the draw, and we'll, the Wheat Kings will get it out across the blue line. And Lyndon McCollum almost got that one out. So the Wheat Kings are now off off of the penalty kill. Cole Jordan with a slash in behind the play and could have been called for that one. Now it's Brandon that's starting to bring the 
physicality and the chippiness here. Perhaps a little frustration settling in for the block. Black frustration maybe with some of the missed calls against the Thistles. Yeah. There, there have been a lot of late hits in this game that need to be called that are not getting called. But hey, that's why we're up here and not, not skating on the around. And it looks like the ref is going to redo that face off. A few players jumping in way too early. So the Thistles attempting the shot off right off the face off, but they can't get it to go. And a bit of a misplay there on the Wheat King's part. And I'm not sure what the ref is blowing down on this one. I think they might be ruling that, that it was gloved ahead. Picked up and thrown. Maybe, but it, it wasn't. Like it went, it went behind him. So, there'll be a face off just outside the Brandon Wheat King's end. And the Thistles try to get it. They'll get it into the Wheat King's own end. And now there's a call against Brett Paddock. So the Wheat Kings are getting called again for something mostly unavoidable, and Jared Daniska is getting a call too. So that's looks probably going to be coincidental roughing calls. And will remain at five on five. That's, it's Mitch. that's Nadeska's third trip to the to the penalty box already this afternoon. And there's still another Hockey period of hockey to go. So the Wheat Kings will get that one across the Thistles blue line. And Drayson Collier can't hang on to it. So now they'll go all the way around. And the Wheat Kings will be forced to retreat. That's Ryland Thiessen who goes tries to get it back across the blue line. And the puck just sitting in the slot, and nobody was there. So now there's a battle along the half wall. Looks like about five, six men in there. And there's another penalty coming up. And looks like this one's going against the Wheat Kings, too. Cross check. And I'm not sure what's... Number 20 on the Kenora roster. Aiden Bebo is getting called for a cross check. So the Wheat Kings going to the power play. Power play brought to you by GT Hockey. So Bebo and Naniska both in the penalty box. This is only Bebo, Bebo's third minor of the season. So one of the one of the lower penalty uh, penalized players on this roster. We can get the puck off face off. And Sawchuk, Carter Sawchuk, has the puck at the blue line. Now it'll go to Damon Hunt, who passes it down low. But that pass is deflected away and back out to center. Damon Hunt has it behind his own net. And now the Wheat Kings will restart this rush. So Hunt goes to McCallum, and McCallum can't get, a, get his stick on it. And the Thistles now battling at the Wheat Kings blue line, and there's McCallum, or McCallum. And he'll fire it across to Nolan Ritchie, who brings it into the Thistles' end. And in behind the net, he'll go all the way around. Carter Sawchuk now, and now back to Hunt. Carter Sawchuk again. He's got it at the blue line, back to Hunt. Hunt with the shot, and that one will go just a little bit wide. And there's a shot out in front, and it comes right back to Sawchuk. Carter Sawchuk has it at the blue line. He, he goes through the legs to Nolan Ritchie, and that pass is deflected back out into the Wheat King's end. So Carter Sawchuk now forced to restart the rush, and Lyndon McCallum will turn back. Colin Cook now. Cook chasing the puck in behind the Thistle's net, and he's got the puck now, and tries to go back to Drayson Collier, but Collier can't get a handle. So now the Thistles will go all the way out, but Calder Anderson is waiting at center for that one. And it's Wheat Kings again. Here comes Collier. There's a shot and a solid stop there by Cooper Hatfield and some pushing and shoving late. So Cooper Hatfield making that save on a solid shot from Drayson Collier. 
Another solid play there by Collier. He's having a real good afternoon this, this afternoon. And, and Col Collier is one of those players that goes a little bit under the radar. Drayson Collier is uh, fifth or sixth in team scoring, but he's always there, always in the middle of things, making sure that something is happening for as, his side. For his as team. we saw in the earlier goal, mm -hmm. which has the if the game finished right now, it would be the game winner. So Nolan Ritchie going in to take the face off, and an another penalty to the Thistles. Power play again, brought to you by GT Hockey. <laughs> so Nolan Ritchie has it, and he'll go to McCollum. McCallum goes to Hunt. Hunt goes far side, and the Wheat Kings score! That's a power play goal. Eight seconds left on the penalty to Witherspoon. That power play. And that goal brought to you by my phone, your authorized TELUS dealer in Verdon and two locations in Brandon. Mason Kaspik looks like he's going to come away with the goal on that one as it's deflected right out front. But some solid puck movement from the Wheat Kings, just making sure that they're cycling and getting pucks to the net. Hatfield did all he could there for Kenora, but... He was he was hung out to dry on that on that power play five on three. Yeah, you, you can't really do much. They, they say uh, the goalpost is the goaltender's best friend. I'd have to say the five on three power play, a penalty kill would be his worst enemy. Absolutely. So the Wheat Kings still on the power play, brought to you by GT Hockey, and the Thistles will force that one all the way out, and Jake Thompson or Keegan Morrison rather is forced to retreat for it. So here come the Wheat Kings again. This is Rylan Thiessen. Thiessen goes back to the blue line for Keegan Morrison, and it's back to Thiessen. Rylan Thiessen, and he forces his man down. And he'll go back to Keeg uh, Calder Anderson. Anderson with a shot, and that one goes just wide of the net. And Keegan Morrison will force that down into the corner for the Wheat Kings. And there's another shot, and Cooper Hatfield stretches out and covers up on that one. 38 seconds to go in this period. Big save there by Hatfield. You don't want to go down any more than you already are heading into the last 20 minutes. No, you've got 38 seconds to kill off. And if you can do that, that means the Wheat Kings are coming into the third period with only six seconds on the power play. So the Wheat Kings will pick it up off the face off again and they will try to chip it in for an, one more quick chance before the period ends. And there's Brett Paddock. Paddock goes across to Damon Hunt and Hunt goes just wide of the net on that shot. And Brett Paddock is brought down outside of the blue line. Short read is kind of giving him the business in the, in the neutral zone. Eight seconds to go. And the Wheat Kings with another opportunity right out in front. And looks like that'll be the end of it for this second period. So it's the, the chippiness is coming from both sides. But neither, neither team is really helping themselves with the number of penalties they're taking. No, it's not the most disciplined of games that I've seen, that's for sure. And Sullivan Short read right out in front of us just a minute ago. Work, trying to work over Brett Paddock and you know how well that works Brett Paddock is he's a, he's a solid player you don't you don't mess with too much so that's the end of the second period we've got your intermission coming up and we will also have an interview with the Kenora Thistles backup goaltender Matthew Booth and your second period summary. And those are all coming up in just a little bit here on the Manitoba Sports Network. SAR Sport and Recreation in Steinbeck. We're the Husqvarna Motorcycle, Polaris ORV, and Polaris Slingshot dealer. Along with full sales of new and used, we offer service, parts, and sales for everything. Come and see us in Steinbeck.
Hi, I'm Melanie uh, from Melanie Bond and Athletic Therapy. I deal with rehab here, and one of the treatments that I use is massage, some mobilizations, and there are many other techniques that I take care of to help heal injuries. I treat sports injuries, workplace injuries, motor vehicle accident injuries, and I direct bill to MPI, WCB, and other third-party insurers. Thank you. Come see us. Welcome to MB Seeds. I'm Matt and this is B, and we're a family-run business. We've been operating since 2012 and we sell canola, soybeans, corn, wheat, barley, oats, and peas. We also run a cleaning facility on site just south of Low Farm where we can clean almost anything that you can grow. Come check us out today. Welcome back to today's broadcast on the Manitoba Sports Network between the Brandon AAA Midget Wheat Kings and the Kenora Thistles. It is 4-1 Brandon after two periods, and here is Jared with Kenora Thistles backup goaltender Matthew Booth. Well, welcome back to the Brandon Sportsplex for AAA Midget Hockey League action. Right now I'm talking with Matthew Booth of the Kenora Thistles. And Matthew, your team comes out of the second period down a bit, but you've had some good stuff going on in the second period. So what do you think is kind of your mentality going into the third period? Oh, uh, we're going to have to go to work. We're going to have to win a little battles all along or all over the ice. We're going to have to throw some pucks to the net. We're going to have to go. They're not going to be pretty goals. We're going to have to bang them in. We're going to we're going to have to go to work for this one. And you come you've come into this season with a little bit of uh, struggles, but You've been, your team has looked good in the uh, first and second period. So what do you think your team needs as a momentum boost just to get that uh, the first start in the third period? Uh, I think it's just going to be us like uh, going, like getting some balances. Like We're going to have to get lucky a little bit, but we're just going to have to bear down a little bit more. We're just going to maybe grip the sticks a little bit tighter. We're going to have to like really work this period because we're down, down three, so it's going to be the uphill battle, but we're gonna, we can do it. And of course, your your team has run into a little bit of penalty trouble along with the Wheat Kings. So, what is kind of the thought as far as making sure you uh, clean up a little bit on those penalties? Uh, we're just gonna have to like play as clean as we can. You know, like play whistle to whistle, nothing after it. We're gonna, I don't know, keep our mouths shut. Just focus on the game. All right, thank you very much. We'll be back in just a little bit with your second period summary here on the Manitoba Sports Network. And this interview brought to you by CM Engrave. Thanks, Jared. We'll be right back after these commercial breaks.
do I talk at all? Or do you offer to talk at all? Or? SAR is Sport and Recreation in Steinbeck. We're the Husqvarna Motorcycle, Polaris ORV, and Polaris Slingshot dealer. Along with full sales of new and used, we offer service, parts, and sales for everything. Come and see us in Steinbeck.
Well, welcome back to the Manitoba Sports Network where we have Manitoba AAA Midget Hockey League action. We've got the Brandon Wheat Kings and the Kenora Thistles. And that second period, a flurry of action. Just so much going on. And the Wheat Kings still leading a 4 to 1. So the shots after that period are 18 to 13. And to be honest, I feel like it should be more. I do too. Uh, Brandon has been by far the better team so far this this game, and Kenora, they're still managing to hang in there with the, with the Wheat So the shots for the second period were seven to six for the Wheat Kings, and penalties just running rampant in that second period. A couple of majors that have been handed out, uh, Tanner, not uh, Tanner Morrison getting the gate as well as uh, Jackson Orr. Couple big losses on the blue line for the Wheat Kings, yep. And Jared Naniska taking more than his fair share of penalties. So the Wheat Kings, if if you only look at it from the area of special teams, it should this game should be a lot worse than it is. Oh yeah, Hadfield's being sharp back there for the Thistles though. And he's keeping his team in it through 40 minutes. So the second period summary brought to you by CM Engrave. Are you looking for trophies or medals for your next hockey tournament? Call CM Engrave today, 204-224-2416. They have the best prices in Manitoba. They ship all over Manitoba. You won't be sorry you called. So the Wheat Kings got an early shot off the, in the, here in the third period. And now... Thistles have the puck in the offensive zone, but now Wheat Kings come away with it, and Carter Sawchuk, or Lyndon McCallum, Lyndon McCallum rather, will throw it out. And there's Sawchuk now, and McCallum with an opportunity, and the Wheat Kings just couldn't capitalize. So now the Thistles will get it all the way out and back into Brandon's territory. And now the Wheat Kings have an opportunity again, and there's a shot, and that one is in. Lyndon McCallum with a long shot. That's his 10th point of the year. Lyndon McCallum scores on a great cross-eye speed from Carter Sawchuk. McCallum definitely atoning for that bad unsportsmanlike conduct penalty in the second period. That's more like the McCallum that he, Brandon hockey fans has, have came to know and love. And that's why he's, that's what the Wheat Kings kept uh, him around in for the start of the season. So the Thistle and that goal brought to you by my phone, your authorized TELUS dealer in Verdon and two locations in Brandon. And there's an icing call. We can call so a face-off. Lyndon McCollum, assist number 16, Carter Sawchuk, and number 22, Jake Thompson. So Jake Thompson McCullough gets an assist on that one. That's his Sawchuck fifth assist of the season. And Sawchuk also assisting. So a face-off in the Wheat King's end and Thistles will get that one and Gula will fire it in and now it's in behind the Wheat King's net and there's a shot that comes off the stick of Keegan Watkins McIntyre and Bach McIntyre can't hang on to it as another shot comes to him and now the Wheat Kings will carry it out there's Nolan Ritchie and he'll fire the pass off to Colin Cook Cook will pick it up in the offensive end and he's getting upended by the Thistles and now the Thistles will get it back across the blue line. They'll fire it all the way into the Wheat King's end. Watkins McIntyre comes out to drop it off for his defenseman. And that one gets out past center. And the Wheat King's now a battle at the blue line. Now the Wheat King's back at it. And Drayson Collier gets it. And he's in a foot race now. And there's a shot. And that one goes right into the midsection of Cooper Hatfield. And now some pushing and shoving going on. It looks like the net came off, along with Hatfield's blocker. Big chance there by Collier, but unable to pot home the second of the game. Hatfield was sharp on that one. And it's a good thing because his defense was not. Drayson Collier was allowed to walk basically straight to the net once he got a hold of the puck. And Hatfield had to make that save for his whole defense. So there's a blocked shot from uh, Keegan Morrison, and now the Thistles will throw it in. So now there's a battle in behind the net. And 
Looks like it will come out to the blue line and fired right back in. So the Wheat Kings will pick it up behind their own net. This is Keegan Morrison. And Morrison will fire it off the wall to Drayson Collier, who can't get a handle. So now the Wheat Kings will put it off the glass and go back on offense. And that one goes, that's a rather interesting defensive play. Yeah, you don't see that too much. The Throwing the puck at your own net. Especially from that far away. Yeah, you. that's an interesting strategy. We'll see how that plays out through the rest of the game. A little, a little under two and a half minutes gone in this third period. And the Wheat Kings will hold that puck in. And a deflection towards the net. And it's deflected away. So now Damon Hunt has the puck at his own blue line. And the Wheat Kings will recoil. And here's Brett Paddock. Paddock feeding McCollum, but he couldn't get a handle again. So Damon Hunt will retreat and feed his partner, Rylan Thiessen. Thiessen looking up, and he sees Paddock. But Paddock couldn't get a handle, so it's back in the Wheat Kings end, and Rylan Thiessen forced to retreat again. And looks like this time they'll get it out. The Thistles have done a really good job this afternoon of standing the Wheat Kings up at the blue line. They certainly have, and this this line in particular, this Brett Paddock, Carter Sawchuk, and Lyndon McCallum. So now the Wheat Kings are forced to retreat, and the Thistles will pick it up inside the Wheat Kings end, and trying to force that one out, and they will finally get that one to go all the way out, and Gula will fire it right back in. So Ryland Thiessen will pick it up in his defensive end and fire it across to his D partner, Damon Hunt. And Hunt will fire a long stretch pass up. And Colin Cook will now be forced to chase it. And I'm not sure what the whistle was on that one. You got your 50-50 tickets. will announce the winning number at the next stop you can play. And it's going to be Ryland Thiessen going to the box. And I'm not sure what that call is. Thiessen... Going to the box for two minutes. So the Wheat Kings on the penalty kill, and this penalty kill brought to you by Ferrum Fitness. The Wheat Kings will get it off the draw, and uh, Calder Anderson will drive that one in. But now the Wheat Kings forced to retreat. So Thiessen getting called for slashing, and the Wheat Kings still on the penalty kill. They Thistles have the puck in behind the Wheat Kings net. And the Wheat Kings will force that one all the way down the ice. Minute 30 to go in this penalty to Ryland Thiessen. So here come the Thistles again, and they will try to force that pass out. And the puck goes all the way down to Cooper Hatfield, who will play it into the corner. And the Thistles will restart this rush. So looking far side, and they'll find their man. That is number 16, Sam Brunton. And Brunton will try to feed it out in front, and the Wheat Kings will try to grab a handle on it, but they couldn't. So now there's a battle along the wall. And make sure you're watching out for your head, people, because that puck flew out of play behind the Wheat Kings bench. And we have a penalty here. And I'm going to guess... That'll be delay of game, Cole Jordan. And it is Cole Jordan in the, in the penalty box. So Cole Jordan taking another call in the third period. And this will be a five on three for the Thistles. So it's cross-checking against Jordan. So this five on three has about 45 seconds to go. And the Thistles definitely needing a goal here. So now there's a battle in behind the net, and there's four Thistles back there, along with one Wheat King, and the Thistles will manage to get it out of the scrum. And now looking towards the blue line, where they have number 18, Jamie Curran, who doesn't take the shot, and that is a shot, but it's deflected away by a defenseman. Now there's Curran again, and there's a shot, and that one will be off the rebound. And it looks like the Thistles will put one on the board on this power play. Another bad bounce there for the Wheat Kings, but 
Yes, they're still in pretty good position to finish off with the win in this contest. Keegan Watkins McIntyre only giving up his second goal of the game, so you can't you can't give him too much grief over that. No, just a guy parked out over at the side of the net. He was able to tap that one home, just tap it in. And I guess that comes back to rebound control, which really hasn't been good on either side. No, both both goalies have looked rather shaky on the rebound department. So that was actually Keegan Watkins McIntyre's uh, 175th shot that he's faced this season. And the Thistles man was brought down, and so the Wheat Kings are now down only one man. And it looks like cherry picking is number 15, Ben Hackle the player we saw injured earlier in the second period. Jared Twerdeklid giving Hackle the business. Or not Hackle, that's uh, Dylan Windsor rather. So the Thistles are, have it along the blue line and there's Karan with a shot and looks like McIntyre made that save. Not the hardest of shots but still a fairly challenging save with all that traffic in front. Definitely. Lots of traffic, lots of lots of people that, in the case of a power play, more people that want a goal than those that don't. So. So now there's a face-off down to the left of Keegan Watkins McIntyre, and the Thistles almost let that one out, but they'll keep it in, and Bodner will get the puck, and now it's back across to Karan. Now it's out uh, Cooper Wather uh, Witherspoon, and the Wheat Kings will get it out, and this is Carter Sawchuk. Sawchuk gave away the puck, though, and the Thistles will recoil. So now they're back across the blue line. And there's a drop pass, and his men will pick that up. And this is Jake Thompson putting it all the way down the ice back to Cooper Hatfield. Smart play there by Thompson, just getting it down the ice so they can make the change. And that will pretty much end the power play as Cole Jordan is now out of the box and Colin Cook will come on the ice to replace him. So Jared Twerdeklip now has the puck and he will put it deep into the Thistles territory. And Hatfield couldn't find it. The puck bounced out in front of him and he thought it had gone into the corner. But Wheat Kings with nothing on that one. So now the Thistles driving the net again and Keegan Watkins McIntyre lucky that bounce didn't come towards the net. Could have been a dangerous play. But now the Wheat Kings have it in behind the Thistles net and there's two men battling for the puck. And now there's the pass down into the corner and Drayson Collier looks like he'll get come away with it and that shot goes over the net. So Torticlib will come in and try to pinch to hold the puck in, but it'll get out and Nolan Ritchie will grab it. So now the Wheat Kings back into the offensive zone again. And and that's Carter Sawchuk, or not Carter Sawchuk, Lyndon McCallum rather with the interception, but just a touch offside. Just a bit offside there. Just, I would I would say no more than maybe a foot. No, not, not by at, much at, at all. At the most. But, Hockey is a game of inches rather than feet, so. It sure is, yep, and Brandon wasn't the beneficiary of that. So Drayson Collier will go in to take the draw, and it'll go the Thistles' way, and they'll fire it right back and trying to get it out. And now the Wheat Kings Collier with a force, and that one will come way back to uh, Cooper Hatfield. So Collier will be forced to battle for it in the corner, and he'll center it right out in front to Nolan Ritchie or Braden Michaelchuk, rather. That's a name we haven't heard in a while, Braden Michaelchuk. No, we haven't said his name too much th this afternoon. So here come the Thistles again. This is Naniska. Jared Naniska drives wide of his defenseman, and he's stood up there in behind the net. We've said his name a few times. Uh, a few, more than a few times, and definitely not in a positive way. Until now. Well, yes. 
But yeah, the Thistles will come away with it and they have it at their own blue line. And now they'll go to their own defenseman. And that's fired in to the Wheat King's end and out of play. 11.05 remaining here in the third period. It remains a 5-2 hockey game for the Brandon Wheat Kings. Shots on goal are 22-15. So Colton Bodner was the one to take that shot that went out of play. And he's been a solid defenseman for the the, uh, the Kenora Thistles today. He has. He's sure has a howitzer of a shot on him. And looks like offside again. And the Wheat Kings will... Be offside. Just a lot of stopping and starting now. Yeah. Which it's hasn't been the flow of this contest. It's been a fairly it's been fast a pretty contest. brisk pace yeah. to begin the game, like the first and second periods. Just not continuing at all in this third period. So the thistles will go off the wall and they'll find a man. And he will break into the Wheat King's end, trying to go for the shot on Keegan Watkins McIntyre. And there's a shot, and McIntyre will make that save. And some pushing and shoving going on, and looks like we're going to see a few of the players get involved there. It'll be interesting to see if any anyone's taken to the box because of this. I'm going to say, looks like McCollum is, or McCallum is going to take a call on this one. Or maybe not. Nope, it's just Carter Sawchuk on this one. So Carter Sawchuk will take a two-minute minor for roughing. And the Thistles will go back to the power play again. This just has not been the Wheat King's night as far as calls. No, it's been a fairly chippy affair in Brandon. And to be honest, the calls have been fairly even both ways. Brandon, well, both, if you'd ask both coaches, they, I'm sure they'd tell you that. They don't like the amount of penalties that either one of their teams have. I, I would agree wholeheartedly on that one. So the Thistles get the puck into Brandon's end again. And there's a penalty, in, or not a penalty, a hit in behind the net, but... The way penalties are being called right now, you might as well get a penalty for a hit. So Nolan Ritchie will get that one out across the blue line, and the Thistles will retreat to center. So now the Thistles have the puck at their own blue line, and they will send it in. Brunton will send it in, and Watkins McIntyre will play it. And that one will go almost all the way out. And here's the shot from the Thistles again. Colton Bodner with a solid shot went just wide of the net. And Bodner pinching in now, and he's going in behind the net. And he'll leave the puck for his man. And there's a shot that comes from Bodner again. And just a little wide of the net. The Thistles will go D to D, and they'll fire it all the way across. And that one's off the post and the Wheat Kings will get that one out. And there's a big hit there right at the wall. And Nolan Ritchie's going to draw a bit of a crowd there. Nolan Ritchie is not a big guy, but he is not afraid to play the physical game. No, he can, he can do it all. He's has evident. We've seen him find the back of the net earlier today. And he and just laid out. Looks like we've got another penalty call. Wheat Kings. I'm not sure. Oh, looks like the net's off. So that's what the whistle was for. So Keegan Watkins McIntyre got a little bit lucky on that one. He did just as the vessels were driving, looking to make the game even closer. I was, I was wondering if maybe they were going to call call the Wheat Kings on something there, but nope. And Cooper Hatfield will pick up the puck as the Wheat Kings send it all the way down. Now we have a delay call. And that's going to be a slash. And is this Naniska again? Yep. 
No, it will not be Naniska. It'll be Sean Gula, number 22 for the Kenora Thistles. So we go back to the power play for the Wheat Kings. Power play brought to you by GT Hockey. That is Gula's, that is just Gula's 10th penalty of the, 10th penalty minute of the year. Or Assuming he stays in the box that long. That is a, that's a big assumption, knowing how, how good Brandon's power play is. So Damon Hunt gets the puck, but it's outside of the Thistle's end. So the Thistle's playing a pretty, a pretty aggressive penalty kill, leaving room for Mason Kaspik to go cherry picking a little bit. And Damon Hunt now carries it out and across the blue line. And Hunt goes roof and just couldn't get that one to go off the crossbar. I thought that was in from here. I was I was sure it was. If there was video review here, I'm sure so it would be Damon going upstairs. Hunt. So Damon Hunt gets the puck at the blue line and there's a slap pass to Lyndon McCallum. And back to Hunt. McCallum. Back to Hunt. Hunt with a shot and that one will go up and over and out of play. A good cycle by the Wheat Kings, but you've got to get a shot. You do, and Hunt came inches away from making it a 6-2 hockey game. I don't know. I would have I would have been a little more uh, curious to see what McCollum could have done from that from the side, but that's why I'm not a coach. Well, that's true. Um, so the Wheat Kings win the draw, and now it's Calder Anderson. And there's a shot from Keegan Morrison that drops right in front of the net, and the Wheat Kings almost got a hold of it. And the puck will go all the way down to Keegan Watkins McIntyre. Yeah, you were saying there, there's so many things we do differently if we were out on the ice instead of just behind Unc the microphone calling the game. Until we actually get out there playing rec league, and then it's like, wait, I don't care. <laughs> Nobody cares <laughs> when it's rec league. Calder Anderson. Well, you get a few people that do care about the rec league that are and then there overly are competitive. A, a few that are that care too much. So the Wheat Kings now get it back to the point. Calder Anderson with a shot, and that one is deflected by a defender's stick. So now the Wheat Kings have it in behind the net, and they'll go back to the blue line. Here's Calder Anderson. Anderson with a D to D pass, and there's a pass right in front, and the Thistles will get the stick on that one. Calder Anderson goes D to D. And he's got Keegan Morrison, and there's a shot. And Cooper Hatfield looks like he got that one. Wheat and the uh, Wheat Kings were so sure that there was a goal on that play. Anderson. And the refs were waving it off. Calder Anderson's done everything tonight except for finding the back of the net. But there's still 6.35 left and plenty of time for a good player like Calder to find it. Wheat Kings were... 100% sure that that was a goal. In fact, they went around to make sure the ref knew their displeasure over that call. Here's Mitch Thiessen. Mitch Thiessen in for the draw, and looks like he got a handle of it, but the weak, but the Thistles will come away with it, and looks like a penalty call. To number 16, Sam Breton. Sam Brunton getting the call, and that's likely going to be a hold as just nothing going the Thistles' way right now. No, and with 6.31 remaining here in the third period, it's not looking good for the Thistles this it is. It is not. Nolan Ritchie wins the faceoff. Damon Hunt will pick it up, and he'll go to Lyndon McCallum. And there's a shot, and that one goes just a little bit wide. Hunt had a good opportunity to get that power play goal to seal this game pretty much. And now back to Hunt. Hunt goes to the right wing, and there's a shot, and Cooper Hatfield makes the save, and it'll be cleared away by the Thistles' defense. And that one goes all the way out. Keegan Watkins McIntyre will play it. And Damon Hunt picks it up. And now Hunt, he's skating it out, and he gives it to Nolan Ritchie, who passes it off to Paddock, Brett Paddock driving wide, and he sends it right down the middle to Nolan Ritchie, who is in behind the net now. Ritchie goes to the blue line for Hunt. Hunt to McCallum. McCallum with a shot, and that one is stopped by Cooper Hatfield. 
that chance was started by a smart play there by Damon Hunt just to Damon Hunt seeing that he's got a man wide open on the side right in the wheelhouse and he's got good hockey sense McCallum with a good shot just Cooper Hatfield made the save Hatfield's been sharp this afternoon shot making a few very challenging saves Calder Anderson holds the puck in at the blue line, and now it's Drayson Collier. Jo Collier passes off, and the shot comes, and Cooper Hatfield made the save. Now Calder Anderson again. Anderson will go off to Morrison, and looks like another call against the Thistles. And there's still 45 seconds left in this, or 44 seconds rather, in this penalty, and another call to the Thistles. I'm honestly surprised that the Kenora coach isn't more upset on the bench. His team, they haven't been the most disciplined of teams tonight. And this penalty going to number 18, Jamie Caron. So a five on three for 44 seconds. This is really the opportunity to put the nail in the coffin for the Wheat Kings. And looks like uh, timeout called by the Thistles. You know, you, you call a timeout with five minutes and 16 seconds left, and you're down by three. What are you saying to your boys on the bench? My, I, I honestly have no idea because it's this is a situation that no coach wants to be in at all. For me, I'm saying, look, don't worry about the goal. Kill off these penalties first. Don't, don't worry about the goals because we've got, we've still got three minutes after this. Worry about the penalties and then focus on whatever after that. I'd also have to think that the Kenora coach might be saying a few things that we can't say on air. I, I would have to agree with that. There, there may be a few of that, a bit of that in there. So this pa power play brought to you by GT Hockey. And Damon Hunt with a pass, he'll go D to D. And there's another pass, and Nolan Ritchie was off to the side, but he couldn't get a handle. Damon Hunt, Hunt goes D to D, and there's a shot, and Mitch, that's Lyndon McCallum with his second of the game. McCallum goes upstairs on Cooper Hatfield. And it's a 6-2 hockey game. The Wheat Kings lead it. And they've got another minute 44 on the next power play. Next penalty, rather. Okay. Nolan Ritchie set up Damon Hunt in the perfect spot to make sure McCallum had a great shot from that side. They've been one of Brandon's top lines all night, and well, all year as well. And Ever since McCallum came back, this is his fourth game with this team, so you'd, you would almost think that chemistry would be an issue, but not. It, it's like they never missed a step. That goal brought to you by my phone, your authorized TELUS dealer in Verdon and two locations in Brandon. So now the Wheat King's back in the offensive zone. They, they have a man twisting in the corner, and the puck comes right back to him. Now it's across to Cal, uh, Calder Anderson. And the Wheat Kings have it on the side. Thiessen with a shot, and that one will deflect out. And Calder Anderson will have to retreat for it. And now it's Keegan Morrison. Morrison feeds Carter Sawchuk. Sawchuk driving the net, and Drayson Collier with a shot. And that one will go up and away. And Cooper Hatfield makes the save and covers up. A little early on the whistle there, weren't they? I didn't think that Hatfield did have it covered long enough to. It was, it was a quick whistle. It was a very, it was a pretty quick whistle on that one. Four minutes and eleven seconds left in this game, and the Wheat Kings lead it six to two. Keegan Morrison, back to uh, Calder Anderson. Anderson. Goes up to Colin Cook, and that shot goes off the glove of Hatfield and in behind. So Cook will pick it up again. Cook goes back to Calder Anderson. 
Anderson goes to Keegan Morrison. Morrison puts that one towards the net and it's deflected on the net by Mitch Thiessen, but nothing on that one. So now Colin Cook forces it down the wall for Mitch Thiessen and Thiessen will drive towards the net with it and Collier with a shot. Looks like it went off the pad of Cooper Hatfield. Now Keegan Morrison back to Calder, uh, Calder Anderson. And here's Colin Cook again. Cook back to Calder Anderson. Anderson to Morrison. Morrison with a shot and that one's deflected away again. And Calder Anderson will pick it up at the blue line. And looks like that penalty is just about over. And Karan with it will come out. And it's back to five on five hockey. Braden Michaelschuk with the puck in behind the net, but hit, he gets stripped of it. And the Thistles will come away with it. They'll fire it around the wall. And now the Thistles, looks like they put it into the Raptors. And nothing working for them right now. No, that hasn't been a very good third period for them, but really they have nothing to hang their heads about after today. Brandon's one of the top. Brandon is the top team in the league right now, and Kenora's pretty close to the bottom. Not not quite at the bottom, though, and they do have some good players there that may or may not keep them out of the basement. So now the Thistles have it at the blue line, and there's a shot, and that's blockered away by Keegan Watkins McIntyre. And there's another shot from the far side, or the close side, rather, and doesn't get on net, and the puck goes all the way back out into Kenora's end. So now Kenora recoiling. And Ben Hackle will fire that one into the opposite corner. And Jared Twerdeklib will fire it around for his offensive players. And now the Wheat Kings will try to get it out. Mitch Thiessen deflects that one out to center. And he will carry that one across Kenora's blue line. He doesn't have anybody with him. And then he floated a pass into the middle. And I didn't see what happened there. Delayed penalty. Another delayed call. And this one also going against Kenora. This third period, just nothing, nothing going their way. Oh, and they, and uh, Jacob Frankham will take the penalty. They hardly have any shots this period as well. This has been, this has been a struggle from start to finish this period for the Thistles. And it looks like the, rep, the uh, coach wants to talk about it. But that'll be over. And at this rate, the Wheat Kings finish the game on the power play. So slashing by Frankham. And this power play is brought to you by GT Hockey. So the Wheat Kings setting up on the power play. Lyndon McCallum had the puck, got stripped. Or not Lyndon McCallum, it was Brett Paddock rather. And the attempt set up by Damon Hunt missed McCallum. So now the Wheat Kings will start the breakout again. Here comes Paddock. Paddock driving way wide, and he goes, tries to center, and that's, that was a great opportunity for the Wheat Kings. That was. A Net comes off. Because, and Kenora is very lucky that that net came off because that would have been a hat trick for McCollum. <laughs> and definitely in consideration for player of the game. Oh, absolutely. He has to be. Heck of a game for the for the Wheat Kings. Wheat Kings prospect and yeah. And Kenora Kenora has had lapses where they haven't been as good, but this game has been a has been a tight one from start to finish, really. It has. The Thistles played really they played hard enough and they played tough enough to win. Just not necessarily getting the bounces. So that shot from the Thistles will go off the stick of Keegan Watkins McIntyre. And out of play. So there's a face-off coming up in Brandon's end. Cooper Hatfield, actually the leader in save percentage among goaltenders before this game. Followed by Trent Miner. 
Both so, goalies face a lot of rubber. and He has. Definitely uh, keep other reason that Kenora has won a few games this year. Winner three games he's won. Uh, Hatfield has won. So Hatfield, and one he, more shot will be his 300th of the season. We mentioned earlier that... Keegan Watkins McIntyre has faced just over 175 now this season. And looks like he'll cover up on that one. Bit of a long whistle there. I guess the refs are just trying to let the clock run a little bit and get, get the thistles out of here. Well, there's no uh, mercy rule in this league. and. You wouldn't need it for four goals. You wouldn't want to run it on straight time for four. No, you, no. If you're down by four. Another whistle, and I'm not sure what happened there. Two roughing calls. Two roughing calls, so incidental minors against the Wheat Kings and the Thistles. So. We listen to more Sweet Caroline. So Kitty takes a call, and also Mitch Thiessen. And... This is one thing I, I enjoy about this, is that this is what the M WHL Wheat Kings play when they know they're going to win. Oh, okay. So there's a little bit of history there. Makes perfect sense. You got, you got to... It, it does. You got to Only they, they, play a, they play an updated version of it. So the Wheat Kings now bring it across Thistle's blue line. And that looks like a bit of a dive there. Yeah, but good. I, I give that a seven. Anderson. This does not look like a dive. That's, that is just Sullivan Short read going after Colin Cook. And Bryson McDonald, is, or yeah, Bryson McDonald taking a penalty call. And I think he's just gonna go hit the showers of 21.7 seconds early. He had a few choice words for the official on his way to this end, Ben. No doubt. And, yep, he's gone. So that's now with 21 seconds, that's not really going to affect the end of this game. The Wheat Kings have had a shortened bench almost the whole game. Yeah, or, down at, the, or at least half of it. Down the two, two men very early in this contest. Oh, it's so a five-minute point. Probably uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. Going to. We definitely can't repeat 21. the words that he said on. No, on no, him. we don't want to. We don't want to have to not. Uh, we don't want to have to be fired. No, we are ve we are very lucky to bring you this broadcast today. But we want to bring you many more. So. Coach not happy, slamming the uh, water bottle container <laughs> against the bench. That water bottle. It's a good thing there was no water bottles in there. Or there would be some showers going on. Yeah, yeah. I once, I was what, one hockey game I was at. I was working the penalty box, and the coach hollered some obscenities, and he whipped the water bottle right at the ref, right across the rink. That would not go over well. And with two seconds to go, this game is over. It is six to two. Brandon Wheat Kings come away with the win, 29 to 18 the shots. And the majority of the people in attendance will go home happy knowing that their beloved black and gold will go home with the two points. That is 13 wins this season. And in, in 15 games, they're... You just, you can't argue with success. This team has been unbelievable this season. On top of that, the Wheat Kings are on a seven-game winning streak now. Seven games without a loss. And they remain unbeaten at home. They do. This is their seventh straight win at home. And hopefully one of many more for this team. They do have a lot of promise on this team, and I definitely see more good things to come for the black and gold. This team has looked outstanding. And they're 
So we have post-game interviews, so be sure to stay tuned for those. And we will also bring you the post-game summary here on the Hi, I'm Melanie uh, from Melanie Bond and Athletic Therapy. I deal with rehab here, and one of the treatments that I use is massage, some mobilizations, and there are many other techniques that I take care of to help heal injuries. I treat sports injuries, workplace injuries, motor vehicle accident injuries, and I direct bill to MPI, WCB, and other third party insurers. Thank you, come see us. Welcome to MB Seeds. I'm Matt and this is B, and we're a family-run business. We've been operating since 2012 and we sell canola, soybeans, corn, wheat, barley, oats and peas. We also run a cleaning facility on site just south of Low Farm where we can clean almost anything that you can grow. Come check us out today. Hi, I'm Cassandra Curie with Fair and Fitness. We're located in Ildishay, Manitoba. We do everything from personal training, group training classes, 
yoga and flexible steel, we also focus on young athletes. We do not only just the strength and conditioning, but the agility, power, rotational control and strength, and flexibility, stability, and mobility is always super important. You can find us at fairmfitness.ca and come check us out. We are back here at the Sportsplex in Brandon, Manitoba, as the Wheat Kings knocked off the Kenora Thistles 6-2. Logan, sorry, McCallum scored two goals, and are we ready? And he is downstairs with with Jared. I'm here with Keegan Watkins McIntyre, and Keegan, congratulations on a great game, first Thank of all. Thank you. Uh, it was a good game. Our players played well for me in front and kept it in their end good, uh, and we had a solid penalty kill. It was really good. And so this is, of course, you're coming against a team that has had a little bit of success on the penalty kill and the power play, and you pretty much shut the door on them for specialty teams. So how does that feel for you? Uh, I felt pretty good. The team played well and did all their jobs, and I just kind of stood there and... Uh, did whatever I could to help out and of course you're you're getting into a couple games here and there which is always good so what what is your mentality now coming out of this game hoping to get another start uh, in your next game uh, I just try and play as many games as I can uh, Trent's obviously a good goalie so I'm just here to back up and do all the stuff that I can and just try and win as many games as I can so you guys are going to be heading off on the road for a game next weekend and then you're coming back so what's what's kind of the mentality when you go on a road trip for you guys uh kind of just to play our own game and uh don't go down to their level or play their game we want to stick to our game and uh, make sure that we're doing the right things awesome thank you very much thank you and up next we have Lyndon mccallum over here whenever he's ready to go Great game, Lyndon. Thank you. So you came into this game after a, a brief stint with the WHL Wheat Kings. How much does that affect your uh, how you come into this game and the way you play your game? Well, you know, obviously uh, it gives you a bit of confidence uh, just knowing that you can do it out there. But uh, I think the biggest thing is you just got to, you know, stick to what you do best. And uh, when you come back to not try and do too much, I think that's key. And you... You certainly did a fair amount today. You uh, scored a couple of goals and making, giving your team that extra boost that you have seem to be able to give wherever you play. So what is your mentality when you come into a game like this against a team that 
again, every every team in this league can be beaten. So what is your mentality? Well, you know, you got to prepare uh, for every game. You know, we're going to prepare for games like that the same as we are when we play teams that are at the top of the league. Like you said, every team is good in this league. And if you don't come to play, you're not going to win. So I think uh, right now, obviously, we're in first place and uh, we intend to stay there. And you certainly made a good stab at staying up there and you will certainly be rewarded with a couple a good uh, few days off so what's what's next for you guys are you uh, when you practice what do you expect from your coach well I mean tomorrow we're playing the Bruins so uh, that's gonna be a big game obviously uh, two teams at the top of the league it's gonna be a battle we haven't played them yet so uh, we're looking forward to seeing what they got and uh, yeah it's gonna be a battle but uh, we're looking forward to it awesome thank you very much And over here we have Drayson Collier. Drayson, congrats on a great game. Thank you. So what was your, what was kind of your mentality today in making sure that you just work your hardest and giving it all you have? Well, like we knew like they're a hard working team. They're, they're pretty big, but uh, they like to lay the body. And so we knew that, we knew that coming in and we couldn't play lightly because we, we knew those guys would, would take it to us. And you, you cert your team certainly played well in the, in the, uh, laying the body aspect yourselves. So how much work of that would you spend on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, like, well, we like to battle and stuff. And we, we do have a small team, but all our smaller guys, like we like to we like to lay a body. We'll stay in games like that. So it's nice to see, yeah. Like we're, our team's not afraid of something like that, so. We were saying up earlier in the in the booth a little bit that while, while your team is all, they're not, you aren't necessarily big guys. You're not afraid of laying the body. And we saw that with a couple of hits from yourself and Nolan Ritchie as well. So when you're going in against a player bigger than yourself, what kind of goes through your mind as you're preparing for the hit? Well, yeah, Nolan Ritchie likes to lay the body. I get to get a lot. Of he's, he's a tough kid. But, uh, yeah, small guys. Like, we, like, underdogs kind of, but we like to low center of gravity, go for it. But, yeah. Awesome. Well, you certainly made a big impact in today's game. So, what's what is your what's your mentality now going on the road uh, for your next couple games? Well, we've had a bit of a struggle on the road, but uh, I think we've been wait, we've we've been all waiting for the Bruins. Like, it's been a game we've all been waiting for. So, I think it'll be a good turnout. Awesome! Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Well, that's it for our interviews brought to you by CM Engrave here on the Manitoba Sports Network. We will get to your post-game summary in just a little bit on the Manitoba Sports Network.
Well, welcome back to the Manitoba Sports Network. My name is Jared Thiessen, and joining me is... Travis Longman. And this is the post-game show for the Brandon Midget Wheat Kings and the Kenora Thistles. So 6-2, to two, the final score, and the Wheat Kings looked like the better team for probably 55 minutes of this game. They really did, but the Thistles really battled hard. and They did. Just, they didn't have the puck luck that the Wheat Kings did tonight. And, of course, we had goals from five different Wheat Kings, I believe, and Lyndon McCallum with a pair to come back to the Midget Wheat Kings fourth, fourth game back, and he played a great game. He sure did. He has a fire lit under him, and he, he wants to say, hey, I belong on the big club. Next year, you're not going to make that decision and cut me. I'm I'm here to stay. He wants to say that to Wheat Kings management. So the Wheat Kings, of course, scoring the six goals, and Kenora coming away with two. So who were the scorers for the Thistles? Scoring for the Thistles... Adam Shunka, he scored to make it a 3-1 game, and then to make it a 5-2 game, Jacob Frankham. So Frankham took took a penalty in the third period, or second period, that wasn't really necessary, so atoning a little bit for that mistake. A little bit, but you can only atone for so much in a 6-2 loss. So... The shot totals for the game ended up 29 to 18. So of, that's a, just another example of how overpowering the Wheat Kings were in this game. Oh, that's for sure. The Wheat Kings came to play this afternoon for about 55 minutes, like you said. And tomorrow they're even going to need to be bring it for 60 minutes to be the, the second place team in the league, the Bruins. And they have a tough contest. Winnipeg Bruins, they've they've been uh, unbelievable as well. They're the two leading scorers in the league belong to the Bruins organization in Jason Soon and Ty Nakins. So you've got you've got to make sure that you're playing for the full sixty minutes if you're going to be beating this team. Yeah, go home, get a good night's sleep, and so you're ready to go for tomorrow. You got a big contest to further your it's a big two points on the line tomorrow between the Wheat Kings and the Bruins because every every two points are important, but especially when it's the one-two teams in the league. The one advantage the Wheat Kings seem to have over the Bruins is goaltending, and the Wheat Kings have a, one of the uh, best goaltenders in the league. They have a very good tandem, as we they, saw they today. They do. They, they really do. Keegan Watkins McIntyre is a solid goaltender for a backup, to have a game like that, you know you have a solid tandem when that happens. Yeah, and Miner, he's, like I said earlier, he's a major... He's, he's, he's otherworldly, is what he is. And he's another reason why the Wheat Kings are 13-2 and two through 15 games. He really is. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this broadcast here on the Manitoba Sports Network, and we hope you'll join us again for the Brandon AAA Midget Wheat Kings here on the Manitoba Sports Network. Once again, this uh, the third period uh, wrap-up brought to you by CM Engrave, as well as the interviews. And we hope that you will join us again for the next game here on the Manitoba Sports Network for AAA Midget Hockey League action.